Coming up on OU Nightly, Judy Woodruff accepts the Gaylord Prize today. Yesterday was Veterans Day. We'll tell you how Norman recognized those who have served. And the election is over, but not everyone's vote was counted. Stay tuned for this and more tonight on OU Nightly. With Halloween right around the corner, there's nothing like picking out a pumpkin to get into the holiday spirit. Norman residents can go to McFarland United Methodist Church to grab a pumpkin. Yesterday morning in a suburb of Milwaukee, there was a deadly shooting. Seven women were shot at the Azana Salon in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Of the seven women, three have been reported dead. Ed, can you tell us what have you done so far today to prepare for the next few days? <laughs> I, I basically prepared yesterday. Um, I just went to pick up a few last minute things this morning. Um, but uh, I, I was prepared uh, yesterday, uh, you know, buying food. Thank you so much for joining us, Ed. We wish you the best, and we hope that you stay safe out there in New York. And Hurricane Sandy hasn't just been affecting the polls. It's also, I've heard, Hillary, been affecting health. Can you tell us more? Yes, I have more details on that. Thanks, Amy. Oh, you Nightly's Jessica Wilder joins us now in the News Center with a terror story from London and more. Jessica? Joining us now is OU Nightly's Anna Rashusta, an international student from Venezuela who attended today's lecture. Anna, what are your thoughts today after the re-election? Through early and absentee voting, many students have already cast their ballots. Students told us why they prefer that over Election Day voting. This year's re-election consists of 21 Democratic senators defending their seats and only 10 Republicans defending theirs. And then, of course, we have those two independents to make collectively those 33 seats. So as we take a look at that, as again I said, uh, Claire McCaskill is in the lead for Missouri. An important thing to note is that it is now mathematically impossible for the Republicans to gain control of the Senate. Let's go back to the East Coast and take a look at Virginia. Now, mm -hmm. right now, Tim Kaine and George Allen are in a dead heat. Mm -hmm. Now, an interesting thing about this election, this could potentially be a historical election for okay. Wisconsin. Tammy, Tom, Tammy Baldwin, if elected, would be the first openly gay senator in U.S. history. So that's a look at the eight different states that um, have really important Senate races. We're seeing a lot of close races and one that could even be historical in Wisconsin. Thanks, Megan. Joining me now is political science professor Tyler Johnson. Mr. Johnson, thank you so much for joining us today. And thanks for being with us last night. I hope you got some rest. Five or six hours, I'd say. That's good on an yeah, election night. Governor Romney saw consistent support from the white voters, specifically in men. Um, he actually took 59% of the white vote in general across the country. And part of this is because our country has become increasingly more and more diverse. What do you think the GOP needs to do in order to have a wider range of voter support? And how can they keep up with the Democrats in the next election? Well, this time around, it appeared that Republicans tried to stick to their guns. Governor Mary Fallon announced that Oklahoma will not implement a state-run health insurance exchange under the new federal health care law. The governor's decision on Monday means the federal government will establish and run the exchange program in the Sooner State. In defending her decision, Fallon said Oklahomans had voted against Obamacare in 2010. Shelby, can you tell us a little bit more about the weather and what we can expect? And speaking of weather, the National Weather Center had a whirlwind of activities this weekend in Norman. Stay tuned. Be sure to like us on Facebook and watch our live newscast weekdays, 4.30. Boomer Sooner!